Welcome back, Sebastian here. Time for my power rankings for the 2024 uh, Formula E Tokyo E Prix. So pretty decent first race. Uh, and now it's time to see how I felt about each of the 22 drivers on the grid. So starting at number 22, uh, I'm gonna go with Jehan Durula. A tough, bit of a tough rookie season. Uh, out qualified again by his teammate Muller and or his teammate Gunther and is uh, out raced as well. You know, I think he has to start putting results together in both qualifying and in the race. We know that the Maserati is a very good car as uh, seen by his teammates' performance this past weekend, and he really needs to start stringing some performances together. The two rookies we had last year, Hughes and Benestras, by this point in the season, I believe one of them had a pole position and one of them would get a, actually no, both of them would have had pole positions by this point. And we haven't really seen the qualifying pace from uh, Daruva at this point so far. So uh, I think there's going to be quite a bit of pressure on him and I do think he was one of the worst performers this past weekend. Uh, number 21, I'm going to go with Sam Bird. Uh, it's always so yin and yang with Sam Bird. Uh, last week, of last time obviously in Sao Paulo, he was ranked number one. This weekend, very, very tough weekend. Uh, qualifying made a mistake, started at the back of the grid. Didn't really progress that much further. Uh, through the race, had to come in for a pit stop. Looked like he could, with some kind of steering wheel issue, don't know if he uh, got dam it was caused by damage. Honestly, the TV direction was pretty poor this past weekend. So it's hard to say with some instance, like there's another one where I don't really know exactly what happened just because we don't have footage. All right, uh, number 20, Dan Tickdom. His tour year continues, uh, put him in 20th. Out qualified and out raced by his teammate, Sergio Seti Camara. Uh, for Tickdom, another really tough weekend. Qualifying was rough. The race didn't really do anything of note. I mean, didn't get any into any crashes, so that's good. Uh, but still looked really, really slow. Um, and the complete opposite of last year. All right, number 19, I'm going to go with Mitch Evans. Uh, I don't think qualifying went exactly how he wanted, how he would have wanted. Wouldn't have got into the duels, but uh, his teammate's time was basically deleted. So he got promoted up to the duels. Otherwise, he wouldn't have even qualified his teammate. And then in the race, didn't really make up that many positions, but then got into a lost control at turn five, and then ended up uh, knocking off his front wing. Uh, so yeah, a, pretty, a bit of a messy weekend for Evans, no points, uh, and that's it's definitely one that he'll be ruining uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, number 18, I'm gonna go with Nick DeVries. Uh, Retired from the race, didn't out, uh, technically outrace his teammate because his teammate got disqualified. Uh, but you know, not really a whole lot else to note. Qualifying pace was well off his teammate, but you know, in a Mahindra at this point, we're now starting to have questions about. You know, I think we're at a point where, in, in qualifying at least, we're very close to having uh, parity across across all uh, six powertrains. Uh, not definitely not quite not quite there yet in the races, but in qualifying very very close I think from top to bottom of the field uh, And yeah for DeVries he had that incident I believe with Degrassi not lost his front wing not really sure what happened there uh, But it's plausible to assume that perhaps he knocked it off got hit hit someone hit Degrassi and broke his front wing Otherwise, I'm not sure exactly how that uh, accident came to be uh, number 8 17 I'm going to go with Stoffel Van Dorn. Uh, another messy uh, weekend for the Belgian driver. Uh, out qualified and out raced by his teammate. Uh, he, qualifying was definitely a struggle. Both DS Penske's really struggled in qualifying, but and then in the race they both kind of struggled, but I think Van Dorn more so than Bern. Uh, for Van Dorn, he had that moment where he lost, kind of lost at turn one, taking out Darubula's, uh front wing. Uh, other than that, not really a whole lot to add for Van Dorn. All right, number 16, I'm gonna go with Sebastian Buemi. Oh, a tough weekend for Buemi. Qualifying really, really rough. Qualified, I believe, lab, bottom row of the grid. Uh, race made up some positions, but still but finished well outside the point even, uh, even with Nato getting that penalty and then losing that penalty after. But yeah, another tough weekend for Sebastian Buemi. Uh, number 15, I'm gonna go with uh, Jake Hughes. Just a not great weekend overall. Out qualified and out raced teammate Bird, but at the same time not really a great race of a great weekend and one to really write home about. Uh, was outside the points. Had that incident with Degrassi as well. 
I don't think it, yeah, it wasn't penalized in the end. It was kind of, a, I, I think, I feel it was a 50-50 move. I think you have to realize that when you're trying to go around the outside of those kind of corners, uh, the one driver on the inside is usually the one who's on the racing line, so they're kind of entitled to that space. So you do kind of leave yourself vulnerable when you're trying to make those kinds of moves. But And he kind of paid the price for it losing his front wing. All right, number 14, I'm gonna go with uh, Sasha Fenestras. Uh, tough weekend, uh, especially given where his uh, teammate uh, finished. Uh, Outqualified out race by his teammate Oliver Rowland this weekend. Uh, finished just outside the points, almost got in the points uh, with that with uh, Nato's temporary penalty, but yeah, not to be in the end, and uh, he's gonna really wanna start picking uh, the results together. I don't know if, he'll see, if his seat will be in danger next year, but I think kind of the reputation, especially in, in terms of qualifying performance that he built up uh, in his rookie season, I think is starting to crumble a little bit, uh, given the performances that his teammates are uh, putting up. So yeah, it's definitely something he's going, going to want to focus on improving uh, in the coming races. All right, number 13, I'm going to go with uh, Lucas Degrassi. Not a great weekend from the Brazilian driver. Uh, Outqualified and outraced by his teammate. Got into some bunch of incidents, got an incident with Hughes, and then I think the one with DeVries at the end that we're not, we haven't really gotten footage of. Uh, and then, yeah, retired in the pits. Teammate had a, had a really good weekend. So, yeah, that's always disappointing. I think for Degrassi, I, I believe he's been in, out-qualified every single race this year by Muller. So that's something that he's going to want to improve. And, well, the reality is he's never been a great qualifier. Uh, and you know, with his age getting a bit older, that's qualifying performance is usually one of the first thing that first things that goes. And at this point, I kind of am starting to question whether or not his qualifying pace is good enough uh, for modern Formula E. I know in the past you could qualify in the bottom ten, and the, I felt there was there was enough of a pace advantage back then that you could just make your way through the field and you would be fine. Uh, but these days, with how close the field is, how tight. Uh, the field is in terms of energy management. Uh, it's almost impossible to do that now. All right, number 12, I'm gonna go with Robin Freins. Uh, tough weekend for the Dutch driver. Outqualified and outraced his teammate, Sebastian Boemi at least, but I do think he'll be pretty disappointed with how his weekend went. Uh, probably could have, should have qualified a bit higher up, and then the race had that incident with Norman Nato. I, I can see both sides of it. Like obviously, you know, Fines is the one who came worse off, was worse off from that impact. But at the same time, the evidence that was brought before the stewards that allowed them to revoke the, repeal the penalty uh, was that uh, Nato was the one who was on the driver racing line. And similar to the incident between Hughes and Degrassi, and that kind of, and really it was Fines uh, who was the one who was uh, responsible for making sure that there was no contact in that situation. So yeah, a bit of a costly one. I think lost a couple of positions. Not as bad as Evans, uh, but still not a great uh, weekend overall for Fines. All right, number 11, I'm gonna go with John Eric Verne. Uh, Outqualified and outraced his teammate, Stoffel Van Dorn. Really not sure what was going on at DS Penske. Obviously, the powertrain was fine. Uh, their customer team, Maserati, won the race. But uh, yeah, for DS Penske in um, qualifying, and I, I would presume the race as well, uh, just really, really bad set of choices. But you know, Jeb tried to make the most of it, beat his teammate, that's exactly what you need to be doing. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately wasn't able to get points. Uh, number not 10, I'm gonna go with Norman Nato. Uh, obviously a really scrappy race for the French driver. Uh, was in the points, got demoted out of the points, then penalty repealed back in the points. Bit of a better weekend. Qualifying was much closer between himself and Dennis than compared to previous weekends. So that's good. I think it was when you correct for groups and everything. I think it was within a tenth uh, of a, about a tenth of a second or so, which is definitely good uh, when you're comparing to Jake Dennis. Uh, the race was obviously quite eventful for Nato, but made some really punchy moves, especially uh, moving his way up uh, like past three or four cars uh, in that battle between Dennis and Verline in the midpoint of the race. Uh, yeah, I think overall got some really solid points on the board. So yeah, pretty decent result for Nato. All right, number nine. Uh, this is gonna be a bit of a tricky one. So uh, I put Eduardo Mortara, uh, you know, basically up right until the final moments of the E Prix, one of the drivers of the race. Uh, qualified second, uh, qualified third, was in second place for large chunks of the race, uh, and then fell back to the order as uh, as it would tend to happen if you're driving a Mahindra. But uh, at the end, got disqualified for using too much power. Uh, it looked like it was pretty close as well. And you know, I think, I believe he had fallen to like sixth place at this point right at the end to Verline. 
But yeah, I mean, obviously a very easy mistake to make, a very small mistake, but massive consequences in the grand scheme of things. Probably lost himself between six, uh, six to eight points, roughly, from that. Obviously, it's hard to say uh, what would have have where he would have finished if he had not gone over. But yeah, uh, I think 90, 99% of the weekend he was excellent. 1% missing, uh, misjudging energy at the end, not so good. Uh, but yeah, uh, so for Mortara, very up and down weekend, but at the, unfortunately at the, end, at the end of the day, no points. Uh, number eight, I'm gonna go with Pascal Verline. Uh, he out-qualified his teammate, Antonio Felix da Costa, but was outraced by his teammate. Qualifying, I think, was all right. Uh, got himself up into the duels. The race, I think, maybe could have been a bit punchier. His teammate, who started behind him, finished ahead of him. So obviously the pace was there. So uh, not sure what was quite wrong with uh, Verline's pace today, but uh, nonetheless, I think you obviously always want to beat your teammate. I do think uh, there was potential there to be on the podium. Well, at least uh, being in the top three or top four. All right, number eight. I'm gonna go with uh, Antonio Felix da Costa. Uh, out qualified or out qualified by his teammate, but out raced his teammate. A lot of the things I just said can basically just be applied here, except the other way around. Uh, qualifying pace still a little bit behind Verline, but much closer than it was at points earlier in the season. The race was much better, very punchy, very aggressive. A bit of a shame that he lost that podium at the end uh, to Roland uh, with that kind of quite aggressive uh, defense by Roland. But, you know, those things are, tend to happen importantly. I think he'll be a bit disappointed not to get on the podium, but still uh, a much better result than the first four races of the season. I don't know. I don't think he's in title contention. I think he's lost too many points at this stage in the season. But, you know, if he has a really strong second half, he might help uh, Porsche in the team's championship. Uh, number six, I'm going to go with uh, Jake Dennis, uh, out-qualified and out his teammate Norman Nato. Uh, obviously, third place podium, which is a really good result, and that's these are the kinds of podiums that really, uh, the kinds of results that really allowed him uh, to win the championship last year, even though he only had two wins all of last season. Uh, just making, getting really consistent second, third places while, you know, his, uh, his champ title rivals were win, DNF, win, DNF, 18th place, that kind of thing. So uh, for Dennis, I think it was an all right race. Could have been a bit more aggressive. I feel like he might have had the pace for the win uh, or at least uh, challenging for the win. He had the energy for it, but just wasn't able to use it in the end. Uh, number five, I'm gonna go with Nick Cassidy. Uh, out qualified by his teammate technically uh, because his lap, fastest lap was deleted for a technical issue. Not Obviously, I'm not putting the blame for that on Cassidy, but a really good recovery drive got himself back up to eighth place, I believe it was, on a track that was quite difficult to overtake at. So a uh, really good race from him, a good recovery drive. Probably would have been ho hoping for a, little, a few more points than that, but I don't. I think at the end of the day, he'll be content. Uh, he should be content with his drive uh, on Saturday afternoon. Uh, number four, uh, Sergio Sanicamara, one of the stars of the weekend, out-qualified and out-raced his teammate, uh, started fourth on the grid. And obviously in the ERT, not the best car, he just had to do manage the best he did. Got a point out of it in the end, 10th uh, place. Uh, really good result. Obviously got overtaken a lot by other cars, but that's what happens when you uh, qualify so high up the grid in a car that has really poor uh, energy management. Uh, number three, another driver further down the grid is Nico Wheeler. Oh, qualified and outraced his teammate Lucas Degrassi. Uh, another really strong season from Mueller, and the fact that he did this against Fines last year, and he's doing it again to uh, Degrassi this year. I'd really like to see Mueller in a stronger car. Uh, I don't know if that will happen next year, or if, he, or if he'll be sticking at apt and trying to build the team around himself. But I think he's uh, proving that he's a really, really strong Formula E driver. Kind of been uh, developing and uh, brewing, uh, you know, in a, obviously really poor cars. But I think he's really starting to show finally this year, uh, especially in qualifying, that the raw pace. And the energy management is there, and I yeah really I'd be really interested in seeing him in a car further up the grid. All right, number two, I'm gonna go with Oliver Roland, out qualified and out race his teammate. Pretty decent race I thought from Roland. Uh, obviously qualified on pole, but then uh, looked like he might have been able to get a Nissan home win, which would would have been a really big deal uh, for the Japanese fans. But you know obviously unfortunately not to be. Um, yeah, I think obviously he kind of made that strategic error where he basically, it seems like he actually let Gunther pass 
and he thought he'd be able to re-overtake him, but he was down on energy, so not sure what was going on there. A bit of a strategic miscalculation if that was the case, but you know, nonetheless, I think Roland uh, was very, very fast this week and very clean weekend, and he, uh, with three podiums on the bounce, one of the hottest drivers in Formula E at the moment. And of course, number one is your race winner, uh, Max Günther, a qualifying out races teammate, really excellent drive from the German driver. Um, I think played the strategy in the race really, really well. Uh, lost that position obviously early on to Mortara, but was during through the attack mode phase, uh, was able to get those positions back. Or uh, yeah, I believe was able to get those positions back. And uh, yeah, I think clean overtakes as well, uh, especially on Roland, the overtake for the lead of the race. And just really, really strong performance all around this season, uh, especially when the other, uh, this weekend, especially when the other uh, drivers in that same powertrain were struggling uh, quite a bit, uh, all three of them outside the points as well. So uh, yeah, but really strong weekend from Gunther. And you know, we saw that last year in Jakarta where th when things were working really well, he can be the best driver on the weekend. Uh, the, the goal, uh, of course, is just to have that happen more often and not just once a season. So there you go, there's my power rankings for the uh, 2024 Formula E Tokyo e Prix. I feel the event was a success. Uh, would have been nice to go to the event, but you know, uh, nonetheless, tickets were sold out. So uh, yeah, maybe hopefully the event will go on next year. But yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.